This is Dr. Sharice Flanagan from Abilene Christian University. In this segment, we will be reviewing part two of chapter two from the Test and Measurements textbook. In this segment, I will be reviewing measures of central tendency and systems of measurement. These are basic concepts that you'll encounter again and again in psychological research, and so this is a good time to commit them to memory. The first thing I wanted to talk about is descriptive versus inferential statistics. Now, descriptive statistics is a broad term that just talks about how we are describing data. It reduces data to one or two um, relatively easy, understood values. We've got measures of central tendency, which again, I said that we were about to talk about, and it also includes some um, basic statistics like correlation and regression. In contrast, inferential statistic deals with generalizations of an entire population. And so descriptive, keep in mind that's typically when we are talking about a specific research study or a, a specific group of data. Um, and inferential is when we're applying that to the population. Now measures of central tendency, I want you to imagine a big umbrella here. And that umbrella has three sections uh, that is going to include three types of measures of central tendency, the mean, the mode, and the median. And you may have encountered these again, but make sure that you understand the differences between them. The mean is equal to the sum of all scores divided by the total number of scores. You got it. It's the arithmetic average. You have done this your whole life. You just add up the number of scores and divide by the total number of scores. The thing is that when we're talking about a group of data or a specific set of data, you want to be aware that the mean can be influenced by extreme scores. So you want to be careful about looking for outliers in your data set to see what kind of um, extreme scores may be influencing that mean. Uh, and this does require interval level of measurement. Remember we talked about interval in the last segment. Here's just an example of mean. Add up those numbers, they equal 29 and divide by the total number of numbers, which was 6, and you get the mean of 4.83. The second type, again, picture that umbrella. You've got the mean, the median, and the mode. The median is the second type, and this is the score or value that occupies, occupies the middle position in a distribution of scores. If there is an even number of scores in a set, the median is halfway between those two points. So in this case, you have to, uh, well in all cases, you have to put your scores in order. They have to be in order from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. And then you have to find the middle point. This is an even set, and so the median for this set is uh, 4.5. The third type in that umbrella is the mode. Now the mode is the frequent, the most frequent score in a data set. Um, so if, if you look down in this data set, you've got the only number appearing more than once is a three. And so the mode in this case is a three. It's the most frequent score. A disadvantage is that it may not really be a great measure of central tendency. Um, the larger the sample size, the worse it is. Okay, so we need to know when to use which one. Uh, we use the mode when our data is categorical. So remember uh, when we talked about categorical data in segment one. Uh, those are often demographic kinds of information, nominal data, such as hair color, religion, or political affiliation. So in this case, I might be interested in what the mode is of the uh, religious affiliation in this group. And I might be interested to see that maybe we have more Baptist in here than we have Church of Christ or Catholic, etc. The median you use when you have an extreme scores and you don't want to distort the, the average. So we often do this when we're um, looking at income. Uh, for example, if we wanted to know what the, what the um, central tendency, what the mean was or the median was of... Um, say salaries at this university 
we've got some extreme scores, perhaps the president, the vice president, vice provost, those people, their salaries may distort a mean in this case. And so in this case, we might want to look at the median, those middle point um, scores. Now the mean is the one that we are going to use most of the time. The only time we will not use the mean is if the scores are very extreme or if the information is categorical. Um, so we could do a lot more statistically speaking with the mean and so we like to use that the most. Next we'll talk about the standard deviation. The standard deviation is an approximation of the standard deviation around the mean. It's symbolized by the Greek letter sigma. In other words, the standard deviation is a measure of how spread out the numbers are. And so in a particular data set, uh, the numbers may be very close to each other, which is symbolized by this blue line here, or they may be rather spread out. Uh, and there may be a lot more variance uh, in the actual numbers. You can have a higher or low standard deviation. And you see there on the left, the low standard deviation uh, is going to be represented by a thin curve, which means that your uh, numbers are close to the mean. The mean is going to be your center point, keep in mind, so kind of visually draw a line down the middle there, and that's where your mean is. The high standard deviation is a fat curve, and that means that there's wider spread of your numbers, and it's symbolized there on your right. Now, the normal curve is one of those other things that you're going to need to really commit to memory. And we'll, I'll be wanting to know what is the one standard deviation uh, away from the mean on a normal curve is always going to be that 34.1%. Two standard deviations, 13.6. Three standard deviations, it's going to be 2.1. And so those are represented by... Um, different symbols and in this case what I want you mainly paying attention to is those percentages on that standard deviation and those uh, positive ones to negative ones there at the bottom that's telling you that on a normal curve the numbers are going to typically fall between um, three standard deviations below or three standard deviations above the mean Okay, so I want you to spend some time, I want you to calculate the mean for each of these sets of numbers. So if you need to pause your, your screen or something like that, go ahead and do so, so that you can find out the mean of each of these sets of numbers. You ready? Here are the answers. Drum roll. There you go. The mean for each of the three data sets equals 4. If you added each column up and divided by the number of values, which was 6 in each column, then you should have gotten 4 for each one of them. The difference is that the distributions appear quite different, although the mean is the same. And so the difference is in the variability. In set number 1, there was a small amount. There's no variability. In 2, there was a small amount. See there? And then in three, there was quite a bit of variance in those numbers. So how do you measure variability? Measuring variation or variability is similar to finding the average deviation around the mean. Think about that, the average deviation. One way is to subtract the mean from every score and then total the deviations. So let's do this for the data in set two. You see there? Uh, you take the, the first number, that was a 4, and you're going to subtract the mean and then total up the variations, or the deviations. All right, so we're going to add this column here, add this column here, and this one. We need another drum roll. What did you get? Zero for every one of them. So when you subtract the mean from each score and then total the deviations, you're going to get zero, which is not particularly helpful. We want to know how they vary. And so if we've got a number that is a zero, that is not helpful. So 
Um, because the sum of deviations will always equal zero, we have to square them in order to get rid of the negative signs. And this is going to give our variance more, uh, more pop. We're going to be able to make sense of it. So then you can obtain the average squared deviation around the mean, and that is known as variance. So you have to square those numbers. So I'm just showing you the formulas here. Don't get scared. Um, this is sample variance, all right? And in this case, this is what we just did, all right? To get our variance, we took the sum, we took um, each number, which is represented by this x, and we subtracted the mean for every one of them, and then we've got to square it, all right? And that's going to give us the variance. Um, the standard deviation, we're going to have to take the square root of it to take it back down, but that'll make a little more sense when we do it in class. So the variance is the average squared deviation around the mean. And then to get it back to units that make sense, we will take the square root and then we have the standard deviation. So I want you to just remember that those formulas are very similar. We use that n minus one rather than n to recognize that, um, that a sample is just that. It is a, an estimate of the variance of a population. If it were the population, then we would just subtract the, the one, or we would divide it by the, by the n, I'm sorry. Okay, so here's some questions for you. What does a large standard deviation mean? The larger the standard deviation, the more spread out the values are, and the more different they are from one another. Remember the fat and skinny uh, curves. What are the problems we might encounter? Just like the mean, the standard deviation is sensitive to extreme scores. Why? Because we just use the means in all of them. So in that formula, so you have to be really careful when you compute the standard deviation and you have extreme scores, you're going to want to let your viewer, whoever is consuming that data, uh, know that, that they may have been influenced by extreme scores. I want you to think, if standard deviation is zero, then there is no variance. There is absolutely no variability in the set of scores. So they're essentially the same. Okay, this is rarely the case unless your numbers are all exactly the same. I have some summary questions for you. I'm going to click through there and I'm going to give you some pauses so that you can test yourself. Other than that, you're on your own and we'll see you back for chapter three.